Wolfenstein The New Order is easily one of my favorite first person shooter games ever created. It's a game that I feel is insanely underrated and it does not get enough credit for what it did for the first person shooter genre as a whole. If it wasn't for the direction and release of Wolfenstein The New Order, we probably wouldn't have Doom 2016, the game that gets almost all the credit for revitalizing the first person shooter genre from that horrific grey filtered corpse it was becoming. It's just like how we wouldn't have the original Doom if it wasn't for Wolfenstein 3D back in the 90s. If you don't know what Wolfenstein is at this point and you just stumbled across this video, one, I hope the rock you're living under is very cozy. <gasps> And two, it's about a big human brick murdering the nasty men in a bad group that I'm going to refer to in this video as nasties, as it sounds pretty similar to the actual name and because I had a nightmare dealing with YouTube in the last video. <laughs> Anyway, Wolfenstein The New Order was an incredible game. Not only was the gameplay incredible, with its insanely punchy gunplay amplified by a soundtrack composed by Mick Gordon himself, but the game told a really enjoyable story which shone a light on a lot of the real horrors caused by the nasties in a tasteful way. It didn't hold back on showing the horrors of war, and it gave the main man himself, BJ Blazkowicz, so much personality. Machine Games gave this meat slab of a human being so much character it's on real. They gave him a drive, emotions, and just the general good stuff you'd find in a well-written character. The general plot of Wolfenstein The New Order was about the nasties winning World War II and taking over, hence why it's called The New Order. But before The New Order, BJ Blazkowicz made sure to spill a lot of old blood. Almost a year after the release of Wolfenstein The New Order, Machine Games cranked out Wolfenstein The Old Blood, a prequel to The New Order. We get to see the events leading up to the raid on Death's Head's compound. How we even find out how they found Death's Head's compound in The Old Blood. It's like, it's like the entire plot of the game. <laughs> it addresses quite a few little details that are present in The New Order. It's a much smaller scaled adventure, it was clearly made on a lower budget, but despite this, it does some things I actually prefer over The New Order. <laughs> Rather than it being mission based with a hub, the old blood is just one continuous level with breaks being pre-rendered cutscenes and chapter screens. But that did not stop the environment artists from creating an incredible variety of places you run and gun through. There are three distinct locations, Castle Wolfenstein, the town and the catacombs, but each area has so many variations that you never feel like it's just three distinct locations if that makes sense. The castle has you going through prison blocks, it has you going high in the sky on the cable cars, the town literally becomes apocalyptic with fucking zombies literally raining from the sky. I can't make this shit up. The Catacombs has an awesome looking graveyard that slowly turns into a tomb you'd see Indiana Jones exploring. And that reminds me, I understand why Machine Games were chosen to make an Indiana Jones game now. Also, before I talk about gameplay and such, I just want to point out too that you've probably seen a few scenes from this game as memes on cesspits like Twitter. For example, the stabbing scene that's used to show what it's like to walk down the streets of London is from this game. Although if people wanted to be more accurate to what it's like walking through London, they should probably use this death animation from Resident Evil 4. There's also this really funny scene with the shotgun. You've most definitely seen these. I'm so sorry for making a section of this video about fucking meme clips of all things. Playing through the old blood will feel almost instantly familiar if you've played the new order, as it uses the exact same engine and a lot of the same enemies and assets. Since it takes place during the time era of the intro of the new order, you'll be using quite a few familiar weapons that you used in that intro mission. The nasties also have far more primitive technology compared to how advanced they become in the new order. Now this doesn't mean there isn't anything new in the old blood because there are quite a few new tools you can utilize. One of the biggest ones being this pipe, BJ's best friend. People let me tell you about my best friend. He's a warm hearted person. 
person who loved me till the end. The pipe is the most useful tool throughout the entirety of the Old Blood. It acts as a melee weapon with two different forms, the pipe taken apart to dual wield and the pipe together to act as a two-handed melee weapon. BJ uses the pipe so many times during set pieces within the campaign, and he uses it to scale walls by literally shoving the pipe into the wall. Only this man has the upper body strength to pull off this shit. <laughs> oh, oh well of course, apart from you too, I, I'm, I'm really sorry man, please don't kill me. There are some other new weapons introduced too. There's this grenade launch that you don't get much ammo for, so you gotta make your shots count with this bad boy. And then there's my personal favourite weapon, the Bombenschuss. I know I completely butchered saying that, but saying German words in a silly voice will never not be funny to me, with how aggressive the German language usually sounds. Stinken, pinken, poo -poo, ploppy, stinken, the poo scheiße, pinken. This gun is a bolt action rifle and it's so powerful you can basically one tap enemies with body shots most of the time, which is good for people who can't aim for shit like me. But you're gonna want to go for headshots regardless with how satisfying it is watching their heads explode. Oof. I mean, you wouldn't expect any less from a Wolfenstein game, right? Well, speaking of something I did expect, the soundtrack for The Old Blood is just as amazing as the New Order soundtrack, with Mick Gordon himself coming back to compose the bops. This time though, the tone of the soundtrack feels a lot more different. Rather than it being hopeless and somber with moments within the tracks having certain instruments kicking in to hype shit up, The Old Blood goes for a much more tense and chaotic soundtrack, which makes a lot of sense and fits The Old Blood. See, in The New Order, you were fighting a hopeless losing battle constantly. In fact, you had already lost at that point. Any attempt to fight back you made barely even dented the enemy, which is why a lot of the tracks were sad and oppressive. But BJ was the beacon of hope, the one taking a stand, which is why there were moments in those oppressive tracks where certain instruments would kick in hyping you up. In the Old Blood, you're in the midst of fighting that losing battle. There is a lot riding on BJ to finish his mission infiltrating Castle Wolfenstein and getting the location of Death's Head's compound. If he were to fail, the world would would stand no chance against the nasties. So when you're alone and exploring trying to find a way out, the music is quite intimidating and foreboding, not knowing where the enemies could be next. And then when you do get found out or stumble into an area full of nasties, the music becomes intense and chaotic, like it was put together hastily, which fits the gameplay as you'll be fumbling about in the gunfire trying to figure out where to go and which weapons to use. Of course the music is dynamic in the game, and the music stays tense when you're lucky enough to get the upper hand on the nasties and stealth around in the shadows. Just like with the tone of the soundtrack, the tone in the Old Blood is quite the contrast to the New Order. It still has its messed up moments and it does take itself seriously for the most part. I, I mean, there's a part with zombies and a big eldritch horror. The game knows how stupid this shit is. You even have moments of BJ cracking absolute sillies during these moments. Hell though, even in these absolutely insane sections, there are deep character moments. It like, takes this shit seriously, but also doesn't at the same time. I don't know how to say this. The Old Blood basically acts as a B-movie to the New Order, and the developers knew that, which is why the trailer for the game is a parody of an old movie trailer. Overall, I think Wolfenstein the Old Blood might actually be my favourite Wolfenstein game, despite its much smaller scale. Well, it would 100% be my favourite if it wasn't for a certain section at the beginning of the game that I don't think anyone in their right mind enjoys. Seriously, this forced stealth section can suck my ass. I feel like this shit puts so many people off of the game. I know you're escaping a heavily armed prison and you're supposed to be defenseless and shit, but hey, at least the New Order gave you a gun almost instantly after being comatose for years. That's my only issue with The Old Blood. It's one of the few games I've ever played that just keeps ramping up more and more the further you get into the game. It goes from borderline dog shit to holy fucking shit, this is really good very, very quickly. But the beginning is so awful, I completely understand why it would put anyone off. Which is such a shame because like I said earlier, Wolfenstein The Old Blood might actually be my favourite Wolfenstein game in this series. And despite the rough start, I highly recommend playing this game. Especially 
especially before going into the New Order, because the ending of the Old Blood actually leads perfectly onto the New Order. If you played them both back to back, it would be a very, very smooth transition. Anyway, I've talked enough about the gameplay and the soundtrack and the tone and shit. It's time to do what I did with my video on Wolfenstein the New Order. It's time to go through the story of the game. I could say you should watch my New Order video first, but because this game is a prequel, you could honestly watch this one first and then watch the video on the New Order after. I'll watch that one first, then this one. Honestly, each one works. If you're still here, grab yourself a coffee or one of those silly gamer drinks, get comfortable, sit back, relax, and enjoy the story of Wolfenstein the Old Blood. The game begins just like it did in the New Order, with BJ waking up, except this time he isn't waking up in a plane being shot at from every direction. Instead, he's in a car heading towards somewhere far more dangerous. He's accompanied by Richard Wesley, also known as Agent One on this mission. Both of them have been tasked with obtaining a top secret document on the whereabouts of Death's Head's compound. This is their last chance to fight back in this losing war, and the way to achieve this task is that they both have to enter the Wolf's Den itself. Castle Wolfenstein. The only way they can have any chance of entering is by going undercover as nasty officers. And there is one massive issue with this plan. BJ does not know German all too well, and Agent 1 tells BJ to just not talk at all, and as it will probably blow their cover if he does. Okay, look, you're German? Frankly, it's atrocious. So no talking. Once they get out of the car, everything seems to be going fairly smoothly. They've managed to get to the gates where they show their papers and, oh, a huge man walks in behind the person checking papers with a vicious mechanically enhanced canine by his side. And before BJ can hand over his papers, the man grabs his arm. This man is Rudy Jaeger, a high-ranking lieutenant. He towers over you and asks to confirm that your name is Frankfurt. But that's not what it says on the paper. He also asks if you're a Frankfurter. He's clearly fucking with you because that means sausage. And because of the immense amount of pressure building around, this is how BJ responds. Yeah, uh, I'm hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I thought the game would have ended there and then, but that shit seemed to have worked somehow. He lets BJ go, and of course oh, Agent 1 is idiot. completely you baffled by what just happened. Moron. We enter a cable car and make our way to the heart of Castle Wolfenstein. And on the way there, we get this incredible view of this place as we slowly go up to it. It's terrifying, yet you can't take your eyes off of the place as it slowly gets bigger and even more imposing as you approach. Once you arrive again, things go pretty smoothly. Nobody is batting an eye, although I feel really guilty about saluting one of these dickheads. Listen, he jump scared me in the moment and I saw a prompt and my reflexes kicked in. Once we had arrived, BJ and Agent 1 split up. Agent 1 goes to disable the alarm and BJ heads straight towards Helga's research center to get the documents. Helga is Castle Wolfenstein's commander, so it would make sense that the documents would be in her research center, the place where she probably spends most of her time. She's also an archaeologist and has found a, a few strange things. It, it just works. Unfortunately though, after some searching, we learn that the documents are just not here at all. There are a lot of weapons and ammo though. Hmm, I wonder why that is. BJ finds a radio and uses it to contact Ludwig Kessler, the German resistance leader hiding out in a village nearby. We inform him that we couldn't find the document for Death's Head's compound, but we're rudely interrupted while doing so. Agent 1 failed to turn off the alarm, so we get bombarded with nasty soldiers storming the research center. You hold out and just before more can come, Agent 1 shows his face with a nice ladder to get you the fuck out of there. We follow him into a vent, we drop down, and we are given a very warm welcome to Castle Wolfenstein. Shit. BJ wakes up at the bottom of his cell. He doesn't waste any time though. He still has a mission to complete and he knows what's at stake, so he tries to climb out almost instantly using his stupid upper body strength. But the pipe he's climbing on can't handle the weight of the human slab and he falls back down with a bit of the pipe joining him, which is where we're introduced to the best character in the entire game, the pipe. BJ thinks on his feet instantly and he uses the pipes as climbing picks to scale the wall of his cell and escape. 
Massive super soldiers are walking around the area making sure no one escapes from their cells, wielding massive miniguns. Due to the pretty primitive technology though, they're all wired up to the ceiling, limiting the areas where they can walk. The wires are also powered by huge generators, which when disabled makes them completely defenseless, allowing you to jam your pipe in and get rid of their life support for good. To give this section some credit, you are able to pick up the minigun the super soldiers were holding to use it on the others. but it feels like it takes every single bullet in the thing to kill one of them, so it's not really worth doing it. This entire section is just basically a rinse and repeat of turning off the power and slowly chipping away at the super soldiers patrolling the area. It just keeps going and going until BJ finds himself in another prison area. An area where the prisoners are all out of their cells, but despite this, they all look absolutely hopeless. BJ talks to one of them and the prisoner instantly mistakes him for someone else. No. Clearly the guy's completely lost his mind from the horrific conditions. In fact, in the center of this area in the prison, there is a giant gaping hole, which I can imagine a lot of prisoners have jumped down just to get away from this horrific place. Our curiosity of trying to find a way out of here gets the best of us here, and we open a door getting caught instantly by a guard who stabs us on sight. But you can't outstab BJ with his pipe. There's also a Panzerhund walking around this prison area. I can't imagine what kind of horrific shit this hulking metallic monstrosity does to the prisoners. It's, it's, it's quite scary. Crawling through the vents, we spot an unsuspecting nasty commander. He's looking away, which gives BJ the chance to introduce him to his pipe. I love you. The commander was armed with a pistol, which we take instantly. And luckily for us, the pistol has a suppressor on it, which gives us the opportunity to stealth instantly, which is definitely what we will want to do at this point, because the nasties in this area are far more heavily armed with assault rifles, which again actually gives us another opportunity to take one down and equip ourselves with an assault rifle. But despite that, I, I think it's a good idea to keep slinking about for now and avoid conflict. Oh shit. I guess not then. We shoot our way through the enemy forces pushing us and equip ourselves with a Kampfpistol, which is just a little grenade launcher. Hell fucking yeah. We got on a boat which is thankfully equipped with a mounted gun and we shoot our way through the tunnels of the interior docking area, which then takes us to the exterior of Castle Wolfenstein, which is of course heavily guarded and locked. I mean, why wouldn't it be? Hey, it's not an issue because the gameplay is so awesome. So yeah, if anything, this is a good thing. After murdering the nasties outside the gate, we figure out what we need to do. And what we need to do is get this gate open. And to do so, we need to find the gate controls. I, I mean, fucking obviously. We end up stealthing and shooting our way through more and more nasty forces and we stumble upon the Bombenschuss, the best weapon in the game. Oh, of course, aside from the pipe. Anyway, we should be nearing the gate controls now. Let's just jump down here and- Shit. We've accidentally fallen into some sort of catacomb underneath Castle Wolfenstein, which goes to show the incredible variety in areas in this game. We scale our way back to the top, gain a brilliant scope for the rifle which I cannot aim with for shit, and we pull the lever for the gate, and that only opens up one lock. Guess it's time to go find the other one! Thankfully, the other level was far easier to get to, with only a little bit of resistance on the way. Unfortunately though, the nasties were expecting us, and as soon as we open up the gate, we are bombarded with enemies. I mean, we, we, t we take care of them pretty easily. And with that done and dusted, it's time to head into the heart of Castle Wolfenstein. Once we get inside, again, they knew we were coming, and they have a nice present ready for us. A super soldier. A super soldier who isn't wired up to the roof, one that can freely walk anywhere at once. I also learned the hard way that pipes no longer work against these fellas. Uh, it still wasn't too much of a hassle for BJ though. Um, I don't think the nasties were expecting him to succeed, as the place is flooded with even more enemy forces once to take down the super soldier. I mean, we have the fellas minigun now, so storming in here is a bit of a silly idea. On their part. We gradually make our way through Castle Wolfenstein, picking off nasties one by one with our pipe, or just a lovely gunshot to the face, and eventually we end up stumbling upon a room with a familiar face in it. We find Agent One. He's being brutally tortured and obviously in a lot of pain. In his pained voice, he tells BJ about a little tactic he uses to bear with the immense amount of pain and suffering from the torturing. I have a secret trick. Counter four. Inhale. 
Counter four. Exhale. You got it. Instantly, this will sound familiar, as BJ remembers this and uses it in some of the most horrifying moments he endures in the New Order. Count to four. Inhale. Count to four. Exhale. Their reunion is quickly interrupted, though. BJ wakes up on the chair Agent 1 was sat on, and we are greeted by another familiar face. Although it's definitely one we don't want to be seeing. It's Rudy Jaeger, and just off to the left, we see Agent 1's corpse being devoured by one of Jaeger's mechanical canines. Jaeger lectures us about how his father was killed by electrocution due to the fact he was stood in water, and how the human body has water in it, which is the reason why he'll be torturing us with electricity, unless we give him answers about who our contact is in the village nearby. And BJ answers very wisely, Claus. Who is this Claus? Santa Claus. Obviously he doesn't take this lightly and we get zapped. He stops to say how stupid we are for not answering, and again, BJ responds very wisely. When I break free, I will fry you in this chair till you die. Resulting in our own pipe being lodged into our leg. At this point, BJ uses the method Wesley taught him to cope with the pain just before he died, helping him endure. Jaeger gives us one more chance to answer the question before he kills us there and then. Guess what BJ does? And when I'm done with you, I will kill your dog. The end is nearing, but a stupid electric chair cannot stop the human tank that is BJ Blaskowitz. And the crazy fucker breaks free with his inhuman strength, pulls the pipe out of his leg, stabs Jaeger in the chest, throws him onto the chair, and gives him a taste of his own fucking medicine. His dog tries to defend him, but we do what we said and we kill his dog right in front of him. But this distraction gives him a chance to flee. The room is just about to be flooded with nasty forces called in by Jaeger. But before that happens, we make sure that Wesley rests in peace. All of our weapons have been taken from us, but we quickly arm ourselves again by murdering the closest poor bastard unfortunate enough to even think about shooting BJ. We blast our way through more enemy forces before finding a lift to take us up higher through Castle Wolfenstein, which is where we find out that BJ has been topless this whole time. The man is a tank, <laughs> what can I say? At the top of the lift, we find ourselves in a familiar location. We're in the cable car station, the one that we came in through at the start. Except this time, it has so many nasty soldiers patrolling and guarding the area. They knew we were coming, they prepared, and they're probably terrified of the topless meat slab running around committing mass genocide. We rush to the nearest cable car and activate it amidst gunfire. Seems like it's pretty smooth sailing from here on out and oh, they shot off the power. Which means there's only one option right now, and it's not a very smart one. The pipe in this game is literally peak, you cannot tell me otherwise. We switch back on the power and get into the nearest cable car. Again, it should be pretty smooth sailing from here on out. And they shut off the power again. Surely it can't get any worse than this. I should probably just stop talking. We swim out of the wrecked cable car into a cave. A cave overrun by nasties because they seem to have guards around every single fucking corner around Castle Wolfenstein. They think they got us and we're dead from the cable car crash. So they've let their guard down a bit. I wouldn't blame them for thinking that, but who are we playing as again? Oh right, yeah. We fight our way through Castle Wolfenstein and manage to get into the car park where we came in from. The place is flooded with nasty soldiers ready to open fire on BJ, but he doesn't even break a sweat taking them all down. The nasties seem a bit quiet now. Have they finally given up? Oh, okay, that, that's a Panzerhund. And it's dead. Just want to remind you, uh, we're just the topless man against all of this shit going on. It's kind of insane. The only place to go now is the village nearby, where Kessler is waiting in a tavern for us. We aren't met with any resistance in the village. In fact, the place feels completely abandoned apart from this one drunk guy rambling about God knows what. Could you mind? 
Haven't seen Pan Minson. At the tavern door, we are met with a young girl. That girl being Annette, a young Jewish girl Kessler is sheltering from the nasties. It feels like we're in a safe place now. I can imagine BJ is quite tired, so he decides to go upstairs and take a rest on the nearest mattress. In his sleep, he has a nightmare. A nightmare where he's in a pixelated hellhole where he is completely lost in similar looking rooms, constantly searching for a key to escape. Where is the key? He can't find the key. Will he ever be able to escape this nightmare? Yeah, they brought back these little nightmare Easter eggs in the old blood. And they're very cool Easter eggs. Walking into the tavern, we see the place completely boarded up and tables are flipped acting as cover. It's very obvious what's going to be happening in here. We finally get to meet Kessler in person, but our meeting is cut short because the nasties know we're here and they send in the hounds. Annette has been injured by the dog and it's not safe for her here. Kessler points out a hatch to go through to get out of here and we open it up for them to get into safely. We don't join them though because we know what we need to do. Anyway, with that sorted, it's time to let them know it's safe. Americans! Never mind. Rudy Yeager blasts through the front, completely decked out in armor, wielding two miniguns. We take care of the fucker by slowly stripping him of his armor by damaging him enough to deactivate his suit, up until we take his helmet off and finish the job. <laughs> He's decked out the armor with some sort of self-destruct system, so yeah, uh, let's get the fuck out of it. There's no time to lose, we all get on a boat and escape. There's still a job that needs to be done though. We need that document and Kessler informs us of someone who knows Helga's exact whereabouts, their codename being Agent 2. We don't know who this person is, but we know where they are now, so with a brand new objective, we push those two under the boating house to hide out safely and we go out to find this person and find that bloody document we've been trying to get all this time. As you would expect, the village is completely swarmed with nasty soldiers, between here and where we need to go. A silly little killing spree later. We find the location and the person in the place gives us instructions on entering the building. I guess we need to be discreet or some shit, so we go in from a window on the side and once inside, BJ is instantly met with a familiar face. Bloody hell. Where's your shirt, you handsome sod? Agent 2 is a woman named Pippa. She's here undercover as a nurse, and she has a dead nasty in her bed. <laughs> Turns out that nasty is one of Helga's flunkies. Not my words, it was, it was hers. She got information out of him that Helga is in a tavern nearby, and that she has the document with her, which is very useful information indeed. We have to go undercover as a waiter. We need to put a shirt on for starters, and stash our guns away somewhere, because waiters don't usually carry firearms, surprisingly. We swim through some sewers, climb a wall with our trusty pipe because I guess it's okay for waiters to carry pipes but not firearms, and we make our way into the tavern. All we need to go undercover is to put on an apron and carry a tray of wine because Helga loves wine, or some shit. We make our way through the tavern completely overrun with nasties celebrating and drinking their sorrows away, and so we make our way into the room Helga's in. She doesn't seem to suspect a thing, and the document is right there on her desk. BJ pulls a sneaky maneuver with the tray and makes his way out. Oh god fucking damn it. Helga wants us to take a seat. In a scene very reminiscent to the train section in the New Order with Frau Angel, Helga monologues to BJ about something. I actually didn't play with subtitles on because it looks better for footage and she speaks a lot of German at this point. She makes us try the wine, maybe she suspects it being poisoned or some shit. It hasn't been though, it just it just tastes like shit because it's wine. Helga tries a bit too and uh, yeah, she's not the biggest fan of it. Knowing this, she makes you drink the rest of it. Then suddenly after more tension and monologuing, she speaks English. Because my dear incompetent Shriner, he's not a waiter. He's a spy. Oh, I wonder how she found that out. I wonder if it was the pipe BJ had on him. It seems like this is the end. There's a gun pointed at our head. We might as well accept our fate. But suddenly, Helga gets a call. A nasty soldier explains to her how they used dynamite on a crypt they had found. And a weird gas was leaking from it. This distraction gives BJ the opportunity to strike. But he is quickly interrupted by a random ass earthquake, which actually impacts his aim. And he ends up missing, like he's playing the game on a controller or some shit. And then suddenly... Was passiert? 
Dynamit. Sie haben den Boden mit Dynamit gesprengt. Das muss das Erdbeben ausgelöst haben. Oh Gott. Die ganze Stadt? Raus! Schnell, bevor das ganze Gebäude einstürzt. Wir müssen zur Ausgabe. After regaining consciousness, BJ's first instinct is to contact Kessler to make sure he's okay. But all we get in return is static. Something is wrong. Everything is covered in a blanket of a hellish saturated orange light. We need to head back to the boathouse to make sure Kessler and Annette are okay. After some exploring, we spot a lone nasty soldier. So we drop down to murder him and arm ourselves with his weaponry like we usually do with these fuckers. And oh, oh fuck, he's a zombie. What? So yeah, uh, every dead fella around has been transformed into a shambling corpse. Even the dogs are zombies now. We make our way back to Pippa, but the way in is blocked off by pieces of wood, and we see that the corpse that was laying on her bed has been reanimated, and we don't get through in time to save her. That's another agent down, sadly. We reach into the chest by the bed to re-equip ourselves with our weaponry, and while doing so, we witness Pippa come back from the dead. So we grab our firearms as quickly as possible and put her out of her misery. Bit overkill, but I guess it was effective. We head through the town blasting nasty zombies left and right, who were probably the ones we gunned down earlier in the village. You can easily get overrun by these fellas. They act slow at first, but when you least expect it, they quickly shamble towards you, catching you off guard. It doesn't help that they all come in pretty big groups too. Anyway, we manage to make our way back to the boathouse and we pull out the boat. Kessler and Annette have gone missing. They probably fled after the earthquake. Luckily for us though, Kessler left his double barrel shotgun, but the tip of it has been damaged, which means we gotta saw that shit off, leading on to this silly scene. Now we have a sort of shotgun, and you know, you can't have a zombie apocalypse, and you know, you can't have a zombie apocalypse without a sort of shotgun. Further into the village, we encounter Kessler and Annette, but they're both in trouble, and at this point, we're met with a choice. Both of them are in separate buildings, and we only have time to save one of them. Very similar to a certain choice you had to make in the New Order. I decided to save Kessler because he's a huge asset for this mission. The guy has far more experience compared to Annette, also because I didn't have the achievement yet for saving him, because I used usually save a nut. Yeah. I mean, hey, I might still have time to save her. Okay, uh... I guess not. BJ doesn't let this choice get to him. He still has a mission to finish. He needs to find Helga again and get that document. She's probably at the excavation site where they caused this zombie outbreak. So we gotta head through the village to get there. On the way there, we find an abandoned nasty mech. Hell fucking yeah. It's a huge help with getting through, especially past the hordes of zombies in our way. And eventually, we have to abandon the mech as BJ uses its arm to get over the wall to the graveyard leading to the excavation site. There's nothing stopping BJ now, it's just one straight line straight to where Helga is. And something awesome about the excavation site is the gas creating the zombies is in the air. So when you kill a normal nasty, there is a chance that they will become a zombie almost instantly, which creates a nice bit of infighting. As a whole, this might be my favourite area just from the aesthetics alone. Anyway, BJ makes his way through the excavation site, slowly getting deeper and deeper underground. Eventually he finds himself in some long abandoned tombs that the nasties have dug up. They must have had a lot of casualties finding this area because it is flooded with zombies. Eventually we find ourselves at the heart of the excavation site, which is where we fall for one of Helga's traps as we pry open the door. Helga has everything she needs for a master plan. The ground starts shaking as something huge comes our way. Luckily though, the shaking is enough to knock BJ to the floor by his pipe. While on the ground, we witness what Helga was trying to find. What the fuck? Even BJ freezes up and stops trying to pry himself out of the chains because I can imagine he is in absolute shock at what he is witnessing. Helga attempts to tame the beast. She even tries to convince it to scran on BJ. But I mean, she's closer, so you know. Easier food. I don't know why she even bothered trying. BJ gets free and quickly arms himself, leading to the final boss fight of the game, where we have to avoid all kinds of slam attacks and sweeps by ducking and constantly being on the move. It seems like all odds are stacked against you, but in the 
the end, BJ comes out victorious, putting the monster down for good. After taking down the giant monster, we head back through the room that we came from. And in that room, we find Helga on the verge of death with the folder for Death's Head's compound next to her. She's so wounded, she can barely get a word out before flopping to the ground. We give her a nice send off. and then pick up the document that caused so much death, destruction and pain. Suddenly, a boulder lands on BJ's head, knocking him out. Jesus Christ. Nazi fits fucking everywhere. Here he is. Fergus. We're saved by the Scottish lad Fergus and he helps us out of the excavation site. While riding a boat with him through the village, we see that the place is no longer overrun by zombies. We've stopped the outbreak and allies are here to help and rescue any civilians caught up in this. This is a definite win for us and we may feel a bit of relief now, but it's far from over for BJ. Now it's time to get it done, eh? Now the world is counting on us and all that. No pressure. <laughs> Except my goddamn bladder. The monster never dies, no matter how many times you kill it. it. Just sheds its skin and changes form. I feel the weight of the world pushing me down. I try to carry it nonetheless. One last time. Then I can rest. This is only the beginning. Wolfenstein The Old Blood is an insanely underrated game, and it may honestly be my favourite Wolfenstein game, but only when I close my eyes and forget about the beginning section of the game. It's much smaller in terms of scale compared to The New Order, and it does definitely show in a lot of places, although it's in quite a few places that I actually prefer. There are far less high budget grainy pre-rendered cutscenes, although sadly they still exist in this game, and the much shorter length means the game doesn't outstay its welcome at all. The story is nowhere near as deep as the New Orders, but despite the smaller scale, it still tells a very engaging story with some awesome characters. Characters you do care for when they eventually die. It leads beautifully onto the New Order, and it acts as such an incredible prequel to one of the best shooters of that generation. Also, the pipe is definitely one of the best characters ever. Okay, anyway, I think that's all the Wolfenstein reboot games, right? I think I'm done with this series now. Damn, I've had nothing but praise for this franchise. I love it so much. Oh.